All right, welcome back to ABA exam review and our latest BCBA task list series video where we're continuing B, concepts and principles, and define and provide examples of schedules of reinforcement. We will cover both basic and complex schedules of reinforcement. As always, we're going to simplify it as much as possible because you need to keep things simple when you're studying and you need to understand things in a way that you're going to remember on the exam. So as always, check out BehaviorAnalystStudy.com for our study materials, including our combo pack. When you pass, let us know so we can include you in the Sunday shout out. Work hard, study hard. Let's go. All right. Define and provide examples of schedules of reinforcement. In a nutshell, schedules of reinforcement instruct us on when to deliver reinforcement. If you have a technician and you tell them to deliver reinforcement on a fixed ratio three schedule, then on every third response, reinforcement will be delivered. It's as basic as that, right? It tells us exactly when to deliver reinforcement. Now, basic reinforcement schedules are very straightforward because we use them all the time. If you work as a technician, if you are working as a technician before becoming a BCBA, then you should be very, very familiar with basic reinforcement schedules, right? And so basic reinforcement schedules can be continuous or intermittent. Continuous schedules are always FR1 because continuous schedules provide reinforcement for every single response. Other schedules are intermittent because not every response will be reinforced. So question, which of the following schedule represents a continuous schedule of reinforcement? Well, that's going to be A, FR1. A fixed interval one could be one second, one minute, one hour. VR1 is going to be our slot machine effect. So reinforcement could be delivered after one response, three responses, just depends. And then a VI1 could be, again, an average of one second, an average of one minute. It just depends. If we're talking continuous schedules, we're talking reinforcement every single response, which would be an FR1. So continuing basic schedules can be fixed or variable, meaning they're unchanging. So if I have a fixed schedule, that schedule never adjusts. If I have a variable schedule, what that truly means is on average. Variable doesn't mean random. It is systematic. Okay, We have an average. Basic schedules can also be ratio or based on responses or interval based on time. And so how you're going to create basic schedules is you're going to combine either fixed or variable with ratio or interval. And that's going to create basic combinations, including FR, FI, VR, and VI. So once you have your basic combination, well, then you need to specify. So if I have an FR2, I'm specifying I have a fixed unchanging amount of responses ratio of two. Every two responses will be reinforced. If I have a VI two minutes, then I have a variable on average amount of time, two minutes, to reinforce. And it's important to remember that interval schedules are reinforced the first response after the allocated amount of time. Meaning if the schedule is met, if two minutes is met and they've completed the target behavior or whatever it is, it is they're supposed to be doing, then after two minutes, the first target response is reinforced. So if you're ever confused or lost, just break it down. Start with fixed or variable, and then think about, all right, am I talking about responses or time? Then combine, go from there. Another way to define a variable schedule is a continuous. No, variables will never be a continuous schedule. B on average, yes. Variable simply means on average. C, alternating. It is not alternating, right? We're not alternating between schedules. We're taking an average. And then D, random. Variables are systematic. We are not randomly assigning and delivering reinforcement. So how do we define a variable schedule? B, on average. Now, our complex schedules. And complex schedules tend to give people quite a bit of trouble. And we're going to keep it simple here. Don't spend a whole ton of time on complex schedules. Um, like condition motivating operations, I recommend saving complex schedules until maybe the end of your studies, unless you just really understand them or want to, which is fine. I just don't think people need to stress as much as they do over complex schedules. So complex schedules typically include two or more basic schedules of reinforcement at the essence. Now there's some caveats and some differences, and we're going to talk about those. We're going to talk about concurrent, multiple and mixed, which exist together, chained in tandem, 
which exists together, and then alternative and conjunctive, which exists together. And importantly, what schedule is associated with matching law? With choice, well, that's going to be concurrent. So let's dive into concurrent. A concurrent schedule involves two or more contingencies of reinforcement for two or more behaviors at the same time. That's important. It's two or more behaviors at the same time is important. It means when a concurrent schedule is in play, we have two, let's just say two contingencies, right? So if you do this, then you do this, or you do this, then you get this for two or more behaviors at the same time. If you wipe the counter, you get this. If you sweep the floor, you get this. That's concurrent. It offers choice. It's also associated with matching law. And matching law says learners proportionate their responses to match the proportion of reinforcement on each schedule. Contrary to popular belief, responses don't occur only on the thicker schedule. What learner learners will do is they will go back and forth between schedules to maximize reinforcement. So learners can choose the schedule. Concurrent is good because it offers choice. And each schedule is associated with an SD, meaning they know when the schedules are present and they can choose what schedule to pursue. So concurrent schedules are really, really good when you are working in the field because they're choice making, essentially. So for example, in FR1, versus an FRO5, right? Matching law says that you will respond five times as much to FRO1 as you will to FRO5, or you're playing alone versus playing peers, right? We have uh, playing alone is one behavior that offers one contingency, while playing with peers is another behavior that offers a different contingency. So matching law indicates that learners will choose responses based on what? Well, we just said, right? Matching law indicates that learners will proportionate their responses. So A, learners will exclusively respond to the thicker reinforcement schedule. That is a misconception, okay? That is not true. They'll respond more potentially to the thicker schedule, but they won't exclusively respond. B, exclusively respond to the, th the thinner schedule. Well, of course not. C, proportion their responses to maximize reinforcement. And that's what matching law says. And that's why when we have an FR1 versus an FR5, we're going to respond more to FR1 because you're continuously getting reinforcement, but eventually FR5 will pay out as well. So you might as well proportionate to maximize, again, reinforcement delivery. Next, okay, now the last six can be a little tricky. Let's break them down. We have mixed and multiple. Mixed and multiple, remember, are alternating and usually random, okay? So mixed and multiple, alternating, and usually random. So two or more schedules of reinforcement, an alternating, usually random sequence. These schedules occur successively and independently. So once, so a reinforcement schedule one happens, and then right after that, a reinforcement schedule two happens. Okay, so they go in order, but they're independent. An SD is correlated with multiple with the multiple schedule, but not the mixed. And that's a really important thing to remember because on the exam, they might ask you about that. And, and in the questions, you might get a compound schedule question where you need to identify, is there an SD? Is there not? For example, in a multiple schedule, spelling words with a tutor and spelling words in a large class setting. Okay, the behavior is the same, but in one setting, right, the tutor is the SD, okay? And it's going to be a different amount of reinforcement than the large class setting, which is the other SD. However, with mixed, a boy is reinforced after five math problems sometimes, while he's also sometimes reinforced for 10 minutes of work. There is no SD. It just depends, right? It's alternating or random. So how are multiple and mixed schedules presented? A, alternating, yes. B, typically random. Also, yes. C, systematically. Well, if it's usually random, it's not going to be systematically. So multiple mixed schedules are presented usually in an alternating and typically random fashion. Chained and tandem. So chained and tandem are exactly what they sound like, right? They have two or more schedules that occur successfully, meaning the schedules occur in a specific order. 
one after the other after the other. Behavior may differ for each element of the chain. And the reinforcement for responding is the presentation of the next element of the chain. So completing step one and the start of step two, the start of step, start of step two is reinforcing for step one. Okay. Again, schedules occur in a specific order. They are chained. Now, the main difference is a chain schedule features SDs for elements of the chain, like repairing a car. There are specific steps to repairing a car, and there's going to be SDs for each step. A tandem schedule, things occur in a specific order. Let's say you have a FR5 and a VI10 where you need to engage in five responses first and then 10 and then an average of 10 minutes, there won't be SDs telling you what step of the chain there is. That's the main difference. So what distinguishes a chain schedule from a tandem schedule? A chain schedule must feature the same behavior for each step. That's untrue. B, a discriminative stimulus. That is what we're looking for. C, a tandem schedule features alternating steps. Again, not true, right? They there's no SD, but a tandem schedule, the steps still occur in order. And then D, chain and tandem are the exact same, which again is false. So what did we learn about mixed and multiple and chained and tandem? Well, with our mixed and multiple, the multiple schedule will have the SD and the chain schedule will have the SD. It's the primary difference between chains and tandem and mixed and multiple. Now, Alternative and conjunctive are a little different. They combine schedules of responses and time, meaning you, you'll have a ratio and an interval schedule. Okay. So for an alternative schedule, for instance, if we have an FR2 and a VI5, an alternative schedule provides reinforcement when one of these is completed. So maybe two responses first or the VI5. You only need to complete either or schedule. Conjunctive schedule, same idea. Let's say we have FR2 and VI5. Reinforcement is delivered when both of these schedules, the and, right? FR2 and VI5 are completed. And that's really the primary difference between alternative and conjunctive. You have both, you have these schedules um, combined and they're, they're operating simultaneously. And an alternative, when either, are completed, you're fine. And conjunctive, when and or both are completed, you're fine. You get reinforcement. So if all responses are completed in a conjunctive schedule, when is reinforcement delivered? Well, we know alternative is either or. Our conjunctive is going to be and both. So when all responses are completed in a conjunctive schedule, when is reinforcement delivered? A, immediately. Now, when we're talking about conjunctive and alternative, we have response schedules and time schedules. So when the response schedule is completed, we need to still wait for the time to elapse and the first response to occur after the time to elapse. And that's when we're going to deliver reinforcement on a conjunctive schedule. So it's not enough where the time interval just elapses. We need a first response after the time elapsed, just like our regular basic interval schedules, which kind of brings us full circle, right? As you notice, you need to know your basic schedules to start making up your more complex schedules. If you don't understand your basic schedules, the complex schedules aren't really going to make sense. All right, that wraps it up. Again, do not overcomplicate this. Do not stress yourself out with this part of your studies. Keep it, keep it simple as possible, okay? Um, I don't want yourself, you driving yourself crazy over schedules of reinforcement, right? So... We will be back next as we continue on concepts and principles. As always, let us know when you pass. Like, subscribe, work hard, study hard. See you soon.